Well, the Sensex and the Nifty ended the day flat after RBI's status quo policy, but bank stocks and mid-cap saw healthy gains. For the week, the mid-cap index is up 4%, marking the biggest weekly gain in seven months. On Editor's Roundtable today, we highlight the key points of the RBI's monetary policy. We also deep dive into the Aditya Birla group and we tell you what's working for them. And we take a look at gold and silver prices and discuss how to play this theme. I'm Sonia and today with me are the editors Nimesh, Nigel and Ekta. Folks, this was a very interesting week, right, for the market. I mean, we had a strong week, resilient week. Despite everything, the Nifty was around the 22,500 mark. And just, I mean, there's been so much domestic money coming into this market that this, despite all the volatility, we've held afloat. And the good part is that the mid-cap index has bounced mm, back. The mid-cap yeah. index was up 4%. That was a big pain point in the month of March. And come April, the new book has started, funding has opened up, and we've seen a big, you know, big, big pullback in the mid-cap and small-cap stocks. So, from a portfolio point of view, a lot of people and investors must be happy this week. As, as Nigel pointed out, you know, forget the market, at least the portfolio should do well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and FI24 actually was a very good year. Yeah. And you were warning investors that, you know, it may not be so good year, FI25. But the starter has been good and the biggest outperformer, you know, from the larger cap names is the biggest underperformer of FI24. The banks were underperformers in FI24 and they've started off at least FI25 on a positive note. This week, in fact, the Nifty Bank almost made fresh all-time highs. And oh, you know what stood out was the advanced decline ratio this week. We started Monday at 8 is to 1 and we ended Friday at 3 is to 2. So the entire week, the breadth of the market has been extremely positive. And I think that's a good indicator of sentiment as well. Oh, absolutely. And we had big events as well, right? The mm. RBI policy, yeah. you also have uh, the US data, etc., the jobs data, that is. But let's talk about the market and how we saw it this week, in case you missed out on it. Very strong, very resilient market. We've gained for three straight weeks now. In fact, in the week gone by, the Nifty went up 1%. The mid-cap index was up about 4%. In fact, the mid-cap saw its biggest weekly gain in the last seven months. And a large part of that contribution came via the Nifty Bank. The Nifty Bank gained over 2% this week and it was the biggest weekly gain in the last four months. Now, there are a couple of things that are happening. One, as we mentioned, is domestic inv institutional investors have been pumping in money thick and fast. Remember, it could be a pre-election rally as well because uh, you've had a couple of instances to suggest that the NDA government has strengthened further, the opposition has weakened. In the recent events as well, Prime Minister Modi has come out and said that they will come back to power for the third term and that has kept the markets very, very steady. But Nimesh, you tell us, uh, what are the dealing rooms talking about? The broader market resurgence is one yeah. thing, but is this something that could be sustainable? Well, you know, Sonia, so the good part is that the broader markets have, have come back in a, in a good way. The index is of 4%. But look at individual stocks. You know, uh, at a portfolio level, the stocks are up 15, 20, 25%. So mm. that's been a good relief rally. A lot of the investors as well, where the portfolios have been back in the green. Again, it's backed by some institutional interest as well. In fact, uh, the other good part was the return of the banking sector stocks. You know, as Nigel pointed out, that's been the big underperformer, and that started to picking up. HDFC Bank has been a classic example. Now it's now it looks like the uh, you know that would be the leader of, of this of this rally if the momentum continues. So HDFC Bank is something to be tracked very very closely. We have this very close. MSCI angle as well to the HDFC bank, so that's something to try. But in general, the, the flows are back, the momentum seems to be back in the broader markets. And, and overall, you know, the sense is now that the earnings season is going to start, that will be a big trigger to watch out for, and, and especially for the IT names. IT stocks are relatively going soft into the earnings season, so if, if there is a good surprise from Infosys and HCL Tech in terms of, uh, you know, uh, guidance for next year, you could see a bit of a relief rally in the IT names as well, so that's something to track very closely. And I guess the only pain point for the market from year on would be the commodity stocks, commodity prices per se. The, the oil is back to 90. We've seen across the board all the commodities, commodity prices have moved up. So that's a bit of a niggling worry. But the fact is that the momentum in the mid-cap uh, stocks is back and the flows are pretty much strong, as you also pointed out. Well, just to add on to one more data point, the small cap index for this week was up close to 7%. Mm -hmm. So it was the best week we had, you know, from the small cap index since April 2020. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's the kind wow. of uh, start that we've had to the fiscal so, good times. Good times and that's the kind of pullback we've seen, right, from the lows. But the other event was the Reserve Bank of India's policy. They've held the policy rates for the seventh time in a row. As expected, the MPC in a 5 is to 1 majority decided to keep the repo rates unchanged at 6.5%. But mo the more important is the guidelines from here on, right? When is the first rate cut coming through? Rekta, give us the key highlights. Well, yes, uh, you know, like you mentioned, it was a status quo policy for the seventh consecutive time. Now, rates have been held steady since April of 2023. 
but largely it was an inline policy nobody was expecting any kind of change what did come through is that they seem to be a little more sanguine when it comes to inflation so the rbi estimate for inflation is held steady at around four and a half four percent but they are probably expecting it to dip sub 4% during the year as well. So Q2 FY25, they changed their forecast to 3.8%. So they did allude to, or they gave an example of the elephant and CPI. So they're expecting the elephant to probably be in the jungle by, uh, you know, the second half of FY25 at least. But there are risks to inflation. So for example, there's Brent crude, which is up over 10% from the last policy, vegetable prices, monsoon. Uh, the other point is that the forecast for the GDP was unchanged at 7%. Everyone was expecting it to be hiked. Now, that's probably because, uh, you know, there are variables such as elections, Fed, etc., which are in the way. So, that's not, that wasn't that much of a game changer. What the governor did say in his conference, which is important to note, is that the policy is primarily determined by domestic circumstances. And the cuts and the hikes in the past have, in fact, preceded U.S. actions. So it's not necessary that they're going to follow the Fed. Uh, you know, they could just probably work on their own. And rate action will be determ determined by the inflation trajectory. So the in first rate cut is probably now expected in August. So not uh, so probably a little after the Fed, but it could even probably be later. So then events such as the election, monsoon, Fed, all of that will be out of the way. So August will probably be a probable time for uh, rate cuts by the RBI. Okay, well joining us now is Harish Biani. Uh, he's the senior fund manager at Kotak Mutual Fund. Harish, thanks a lot for joining in. You know, the big question that everyone's asking, right? After the kind of run-up that we've already seen in the market, do you think now we're ready for some sort of consolidation or time-wise correction? Or do you think this uptrend is something that can continue? It's very difficult to say, Sonia, on what will happen in the near term. So we don't try and forecast that. Uh, that said, as you rightly pointed out, that a lot of the returns have been upfronted last year, early part of this particular year, after that cycle from greed to fear and back to greed again. So a lot of the returns have been upfronted. And uh, with the results season coming in soon, uh, you will see some consolidation in the market. You will see a lot of sharp reactions to your earnings uh, in the upcoming results season. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, hi, Arish. Uh, welcome to the show and thanks so much uh, for joining in. Well, last year, you know, the leader was the PSU pack. They did very, very well. And one would say that maybe valuations are still not very, very stretched out there. What's your view on the PSU pack and what do you like out there? You know, there is select stocks like uh, the railway theme, the defense theme. They are pricing in earnings for the next two or three years as well. And the banking theme as well has done very, very well. So what's the theme you like from the PSU lot? Sure. Over the last few years, what's happened in the entire PSU pack is that there has been a mean reversion trade. Uh, a lot of companies were trading at cheap valuations. You had an earnings catch up after abysmal numbers for many, many years and say, especially the banking sector. So there was an earnings catch up and there was a valuation relating which took place. To our understanding, uh, the valuation, uh, the mean reversion is largely played out. So incrementally, earnings will determine the fate of all the PSU pack. Uh, wherever earnings is strong, uh, say, for example, if it's the defense sector or if it's the power sector, you will continue to see buoyancy in the names of in, in those particular sectors. Wherever earnings will come off, uh, uh, say, for example, the banking sector in some of the cases, some uh, names we are looking at, uh, earnings uh, coming off after a sharp uh, increase we have seen over the past few years, you will see uh, valuation rating uh, uh, stopping in such cases. Uh, hi, Rich. Uh, you know, what did you make of the RBI policy? Because as Ekta pointed out, uh, the first rate cut is expected only uh, in August. So how are you positioned in the financial sector stocks, both private, private sector bank stocks as well as the PSU bank stocks? I think if you look at uh, how uh, we have been discussing on the Fed rate cuts and now the RBI uh, policy and the rate cuts in India, it's extremely difficult to forecast that. Uh, to our mind, we are positioned to ensure that uh, wherever Fed cuts or the RBI cuts in the later half of this particular year, our, our portfolio is rightly aligned uh, to those cuts uh, without forecasting that when this will happen. This is a question of uh, uh, when this, will, this is going to happen and not, uh, 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 not in terms of uh, if it will happen or not happen. So it could take a little longer versus what we are thinking at this point in time. Uh, but the portfolio should be aligned towards a rate cut. Maybe in the second half of this particular year, it could take a little longer given how Fed 
is reacting and fed data points are coming through. Even in Indian data points, how crude is behaving, it could take a little longer. That said, one needs to be prepared for a rate cut eventually. Okay, well, you know, the one group that did quite well recently is the Aditya Birla group. They are on an expansion spree. The group's market capitalization has also seen a sharp rise in the last one year. Nimesh is here with a deep dive on why the Birla Group is doing so well. Nimesh, what's cooking? Well, you know, Sunia, to me it looks like Birla Group was the newsmaker of this week. Yeah. Uh, looks like they're trying to bring their mojo back and they're, doing, uh, they're trying to do all the right moves across all the group companies. So let me just go to the wall and explain why I'm saying this. Mm. Uh, just look at the Birla Group in the last one year. Uh, it looks like you know, they're trying to be, uh, get their mojo back and do all the right moves across the group companies. The group has added 2 lakh crores in market cap in the last one year, and now they're commanding a market cap of 7 lakh crores. So that's the kind of market, market cap addition they've done in the last one year. But when I'm saying they're doing the right moves, let, let me uh, you know, go across individual companies. The first talk on the list is Vodafone Idea. Uh, the, uh, all eyes will be on the board meet tomorrow, where the promoters are going to infuse 2,075 crores. They've already taken a shareholder approval to infuse 20,000 crores into the company. So it looks like the CapEx and 5G expansion finally will be on the cards as far as Vodafone Idea is concerned. What has the stock done? The stock has almost doubled in the last one year. So that's, that's the first group, uh, first company in that group. Now, the second group which has done, you know, which has made a right noise is Aditya Birla of fashion and retail. The stock has been a relative underperformer compared to the peers. But now, on April 1st, the company announced a vertical demerger of Mundra lifestyle as well as the fashion businesses into separate entities. And interestingly, on that day itself, the stock rallied 15-odd percent. And just a few days before that, Government of Singapore actually converted the, uh, their warrants into equity. What has the stock done in the last one year? Just 13 odd percent. So, and in fact, it's been trading at a discount to the peers as well. Uh, look at uh, Aditya Bella Fashion on, on FY26 price to earning, trading at 33 times versus Trend, which is which is quoting at almost 90 times. So, it looks like now they're making the right moves in the in that particular company. The third stock company in my list is uh, Ultratech Cement. Recently, they have reaffirmed uh, their position as the number one cement player in India. They want to focus on, on capacity expansion and they've announced at 32,000 crores of capex as far as Ultratech Cement is concerned. What has the stock done in the last one year? The stock is up 30 odd percent. The next, talk in, next company or the next stock in my list is Grassim. This is going to be a big, big game changer for the group is what a lot of analysts believe. They've announced the launch of the paints business, which is Birla Opus. They're guided for a 10,000 crores of revenue and uh, profitability in the next three years. What has the stock done in the last one year? The stock is up almost 48 percent but this is one stock where a lot of analysts are bullish on the other group company which which i'm focusing on is hindalco well the stock has actually come off from the highs recently after the company announced an over cost uh, cost overrun in one of the novelist subsidiary but confidentially they've they've uh, filed for an ipo and they're looking for an uh, uh, novelist ipo later this year with a valuation of at least one billion dollars so that is again something to focus on for as far as that group is concerned so what has the stock done the stock is up 42 percent in the last one year. The next stock on my list is Aditya Birla Sun Life AMC. It's the sixth largest AMC in that group, uh, within, the, within India. Uh, recently, the promoter sold 11.5% stake just to bring the stake to 75%, which is the minimum public float norm. What has that stock done in the last one year? It's up around 42% in the last one year. And the last stock in that group is Aditya Birla Capital. Now, again, this has done a smart move here as well. Recently, they announced an amalgamation of Aditya Birla Finance to create a largest unified operating NBFC. This has largely been done to skip the public listing, which is required uh, as per the RBI norms. And in fact, uh, ever since the new CEO took over, Vishaka Mule, the stock has actually doubled in, uh, ever since she took over, which is, is up around 130 odd percent. So across group companies, it looks like they're making the right noise. But look at the overall financial picture of this group. In terms of uh, five-year revenue CAGR, uh, Aditya Bila, uh, Aditya Bila Capital has done 22% uh, revenue CAGR. Aditya Bila uh, Fashion has done 11%. But the low, lowest in that group is Vodafone Idea, which is just 8% revenue growth in, uh, in the last five years. But look at the uh, profit CAGR of within the group companies. Again, the, the highest has come in uh, Aditya Bila Capital, 47%, whereas the lowest has come in, Adi, uh, in Hindalco, which is around 11 odd percent. So again, they, they've done a decent job as far as the profit CAGR is concerned within the group companies. Now, the overall debt picture, that's been a big concern for them, right? Uh, the biggest pain point is Vodafone Idea, still sitting on 2.4 lakh crores of debt. The next big is Grassim, followed by Aditya, uh, followed by Hindalco, and uh, again, Aditya Bella Fashion also sitting on 9,000 crores of debt. So it looks like, finally, uh, you know, uh, Aditya Bella Group is trying to get the mojo back, make the right noise, and do the right things. The, all eyes will be on the execution. If that do that, 
looks like they could be uh, they could be another good year for the Villa group. You know, and that point you made about Vishaka Mule, right? It's yeah. very important. I remember you pointing this out earlier as well. Yes. I think she joined in July of 2022, yes. and she has before that she had many different roles in ICICI Bank. She was the executive director before leaving. So um, you had done this piece, I remember, on yeah. how there's a change in management which has impacted stocks positively, yes. and this was one of those companies. And, and look at not only the stock price. Look at what Vishaka has done uh, after she taking over Aditya Villa Capital, right? Yeah. Uh, AMC, they've sold the stake, bring down to 75% uh, which was required. Uh, they've uh, announced the merger of uh, Aditya Villa, uh, you know, the group company as well, so th to avoid the listing. Uh, across, across the group, looks like, you know, they are doing the right things, they're making the right noise to make sure that they're aligned with what, what the investors want and how they can improve the financials as well. So, mm. uh, it's a clear strategy to me and mm. looks like, you know, the way uh, they've added 2 lakhs of market cap last year, if they, if they deliver on, on the promises what they're doing, Maybe it could, the next year could be again a good year for Aditya Villa Group. And Absolutely. not to mention that there's a Vodafone board meet which takes oh, yeah. place that's tomorrow the, as well. That's going to be a big news, right? <laughs> exactly. We saw this what happened to Aditya Villa Fashion when yeah. they announced the demerger. So that's right. going to be for Probably putting in money, but, yeah. they have a shoulder approval. If they can manage 22, 20, 22,000 crores in Vodafone idea, See, they've been struggling for almost two years now. Yeah. And if now, if they can manage and raise this money, Correct. Yeah, potentially there could in, be a, 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 a bit of a you know, relief for... Around. Well, what an idea as well. I just want to you know, pose that question to Harish as well. Yeah. Harish, uh, you know, uh, this reminds me of when Chandra joined the uh, Tata group, right? I mean, all of those companies did phenomenally well since he joined. And uh, now Vishakha, since she took over at the Aditya Birla group, the same situation is playing out. Um, how much premium do you ascribe to um, uh, strong uh, parentage, strong management? And how do investors look at this now? So on average, you're right, Sonia, that uh, a management change is taken as a positive by the market. That said, uh, the investors will start looking for the right capital location decisions by the management, which is extremely important in, in such cases. Uh, is the management uh, putting money in the right areas or are they taking out money from the areas which are burning uh, capital in the earlier cycle? Uh, that's extremely important for us as investors. Second part is in terms of the focus on growth. Again, focus on growth is in the right areas, which will require lesser capital or which will require more capital. Will it be return on capital dilutive or which will, will it be return on capital accretive? So there are many, many questions that we ask ourselves. We ask the uh, management teams when we meet them to understand and appreciate. And wherever the companies have taken the right decision, we have seen a swift rating, whether it's uh, the group that we're talking about right now or any other group in the past. And we have many cases where it didn't work out too, largely because of capital location decisions uh, that they had taken. Okay, well, we need to take a short break on that note, but we have a lot more lined up. We're going to be discussing uh, how the gold and silver market is performing. We'll also give you some key trading cues with Harish Pian. Stay tuned.